We are about to go over a basically four page letter from a woman by the name of Nicole Burris who appears to be a neighbor of the Duggars and let's see what she wrote to Judge Brooks on behalf of her lovely neighbor, Josh Duggar. Dear Judge Brooks, I understand that you have a sentence to adjudicate for Joshua Duggar and I wanted to write you to share my family's personal interactions with the defendant in hopes that you may show mercy in your sentencing. I want to share with you what I can see about Joshua's attitude of serving others, the children he has raised, and his impact in ministry despite hardships. We are neighbors of the Duggar family and our back goat's pasture adjoined their cow field in our little town. The entire Duggar family is well known for being service focused. Though they don't brag about their service, we often see that after a national disaster, the Duggar family, including Joshua, quietly step in to help those in need. When there was a tornado in Joplin, Missouri, Joshua went to help out. He has traveled internationally to serve poor and needy communities. However, his service isn't limited to tornadoes and third world countries. He quietly helps families and individuals in our community in a myriad of ways. My husband, a financial advisor, was counseling an older widow around three years ago regarding her financial situation. During that private meeting, he learned that Joshua Duggar was sending this widow a regular and large sum of money to help with her and her son's monthly expenses. Of course, they're going to mention the fucking widow again. Every letter is going to mention this widow. He had known their story and felt compassionate for them. When someone needs assistance, Joshua and his wife sacrificially step in to meet the need. I have met people to whom he has given cars in an effort to assist them financially. I've heard people gratefully share this information, though Josh himself would never boast about it or share the information at risk of embarrassing anyone. If you were to attend a Duggar family get-together, you would not pass through the home without Joshua introducing himself, learning your story, and humbly attempting to help you with whatever your situation requires. If you were to step through the doors, you would often find him expertly playing hymns on the piano if the room is empty or connecting with people if the room is crowded. He would then be the first to jovially greet you with a big howdy. He would come over to talk and ask questions to get to know you better. He attentively listens to people's hurts and struggles and attempts to resolve them. When he is unable to meet a need, Joshua is the great connector. He listens to people intently and then seeks to introduce them to the one person who can best care for them. We have seen this countless times and have witnessed his service on more than one occasion. When I was pregnant in early 2020, I contracted COVID and began early contractions. I visited a local hospital where the masked doctor stood at considerable distance or gazed at me through thick glass. Before sending me home with instructions to pick up anti-diarrheal medication to stay hydrated and keep the contractions at bay. The only challenge in the early pandemic days, all pharmacies and grocery stores were closed by the time I was discharged and I was unable to purchase any over-the-counter medication. By 2 a.m., my contractions were one minute apart and intense. I needed medication and knew that the hospital was offering me little assistance. Despite the unreasonable hour, my husband called Joshua Duggar and asked if he had any anti-diarrheal medication to assist me. After searching his medicine cabinet top to bottom, Joshua found the medicine and then offered to drive it over to our home in the dark hours of the morning. By 3 a.m., Joshua had willingly risked exposing himself to a pandemic disease that everyone feared and that I was miserably suffering from. Even though my gown doned doctor stared at me from behind a door, Joshua drove to my door to compassionately hand over medicine to ease my dehydration and end my contractions. 
My baby was safely born at term because Joshua stepped in that night during a most humiliating moment and did it without a second thought. As a former pediatric nurse, I have had exposure to thousands upon thousands of children, and I've learned that you can tell a lot about a man by the children he has raised. I've seen children who are abused, who have cruel parents. I have seen children who are insecure, who have critical parents. I have seen children who act out, who have absent parents. I have the unique opportunity to see Josh and Anna's children up close as they are my children's closest and favorite friends. What I evaluate in the Duggar children as a former pediatric nurse, what I witness in these children as a mother of eight children myself is remarkable. They are the most cheerful, funny, delightful, respectful, bouncy, well-behaved, thoughtful, adventurous, and inquisitive children I have encountered. They don't just speak respectfully in my presence. My children report how they are honorable and private when they are all playing in the pasture. They are the type of children who ask permission before staying for dinner and then compliment the vegetable meal they may not prefer to consider the needs of others. They tell clean and hilarious jokes and stories. They are active and creative and often tell about what they saw or did with their dad that taught them something new about the world. As a nurse, as a mother, I see that this reflects on Joshua. Kids don't typically and naturally grow into amazing productive members of society unless they are cultivated, nurtured, educated, lovingly disciplined, and adored. Joshua has been integral in that process with his children, and his children are a testimony to his character as a man and as a daddy. Joshua was a tremendously involved father who usually had a child at his side while he worked. If he was driving a big construction truck by our land, he'd honk and wave with an older son proudly waving along behind a seat belt. <laughs> if you stopped by the car lot to say hi, Joshua would have his two little daughters and his wife spending time with him. Look, I swear I can read, and I do not mean this in a mean nor degrading way, but the um, the level or quality of writing on some of these letters makes me sound like a fucking moron, but I am reading them as is, so I apologize. It is what it is. Just for fun, he was a man who chose to be involved in his children's lives, even during work hours, even when it made life more difficult, even when it wasn't convenient. Though we live in a culture where daddies are distant and distracted with personal pursuits, Josh's life pursuit has been raising a delightful family and he has been diligent to raise extraordinary children. Those children are deeply grieved by his absence and I beg you, I urge you to give those children the hope that they will see their daddy soon. Finally, I want to speak to you about Josh's relationship with his savior. Jesus, and how that is even displayed during his life in prison. Oh, Jesus, here we go. We have maintained contact with Joshua and Anna during this difficult time in their lives. When Joshua was first put into jail, he shared a room with a man who had destroyed his life and needed hope. Joshua shared with him the good news about Jesus' death for him and told him about becoming a Christian, a new creation, the man was converted and his life dramatically changed when he was released from jail. His wife commented that she had been praying for him for years and was amazed to see what a completely different man he was because of what Josh shared. His alcoholism ceased. He became involved in church. He had peace. That man passed from COVID just six weeks afterwards, but his family was left with the knowledge that they will see him again one day in heaven, and that is because of Joshua. Motherfucking can't with this. You can do this. You can do this. Keep reading. Save comments for later. 
I ran into Anna at church the other day. She was accompanied by a young woman with two sweet little children, one infant in a car seat and one on her side. I asked if she had a spouse with her. Her husband was in jail. Joshua had been speaking with her imprisoned husband that week and he had connected this woman with Anna and our church even from his jail cell. Josh continues to be engaged in ministry to others even while locked up, even when everything has been taken away. I understand that none of that religious information may mean anything to you, and that's all right. I'm not asking you to understand what a relationship with Jesus looks like, but I do ask you to look at the character of this man even when he is at his most horrific time in his life. He is reaching out to others to serve them. He is a cheerful and encouraging presence to all those around him. In fact, I was at Anna's house on Saturday night a few weeks ago when Josh called. He devastatingly shared that there was a man who was verbally threatening and abusing to him every time he passed his cell in solitary confinement. Joshua was discouraged and prayful, but just days later, the man approached him to apologize. This hardened criminal stated that he and the other men knew that Joshua was innocent as inmates. They recognized that sometimes innocent men are in prison and they were so stunned by Joshua's character that they were convinced of his innocence. Oh my God, I gotta get through this fucking letter because no motherfucking man, no. You do not need to be convinced of his innocence. I know that decision has been made and I, and, and I only humbly implore you to consider the life and character of this man. Consider Joshua's service to others. Consider the type of children he has been raising and how that reflects upon him. And consider his impact in ministry, even when enduring this situation. Most people don't have that type of character, even without undergoing the most massive stressor of their lives. Yet Joshua Duggar has. He and his family are not typical of what this world has to offer. They are better. Please allow Joshua the joy of continuing in ministry to his family and our community as you consider the duration of his sentence with utmost gratitude, Nicole Burris. Oh my God. Oh my God, this letter. First off, the only inmate that I know that Josh Duggar came into contact with when he first got arrested, which I'm assuming she's referencing the initial arrest, was a man by the name of Robert Franklin. And I know that because one, he was locked up at the exact same time as Joshua Duggar. And if you don't know, in Washington County, there is a wing just for sex offenders. So everyone housed in there is a sex offender. Okay. Now I know for a fact, like I said, that he had to have encountered Robert Franklin, who was not only in there at the same time, but also Robert Franklin was on the witness list for the prosecution in the Josh Duggar case, and he was on the witness list as a material witness. So think about that. Whatever Josh Duggar must have said or allegedly said to Robert Franklin during lockup was so pertinent that the prosecution was going to call presumably a jailhouse snitch who has been convicted of a sex crime as well as drug charges to the stand to testify, which tells me that he must have had something really hella good for them to consider doing that. Now, inevitably, they did not call him as a witness, which I'm still upset about, but just let, just let that sink in. Of course, it's not beyond the realm of possibility, it's actually highly probable that he did talk to other people while he was initially in lockup. But this is one person that I know for a fact that he talked to while he was in lockup, not only just because he was in lockup during the same time, because let's do some critical thinking here. There are going to be tons of people who were also in lockup at Washington County during the time period. However, the only ones that apply are the ones that were in lockup in the sex offender wing during that time period, which is how I found Robert Franklin and then find out he's a material witness for the prosecution. So that tells you a whole lot just right there. 
since December 2021, since Josh Duggar's conviction, he has been sitting in solitary confinement at the Washington County Detention Center. I personally verified that early on. That's a fact, undisputed fact. He has been in solitary confinement since the day he was convicted. That means that all day, every day, he sees no other inmates. He sits alone in that cell all day, every day. The only time he sees anyone is when his meals are brought to him, when he's allowed to use the phone. There is no other interaction with inmates. So I don't know what the fuck this woman is talking about. It's no. He is in solitary confinement. He is not seeing or interacting with any other inmates, period, the end. That is not up for fucking discussion. No. Now, it sends me the mention of innocent people in prison because there are innocent people sitting in prison right now, without a doubt. And that's something that I'm passionate about. I lose sleep over that shit at night. So when you have people so obviously guilty say this shit, it pisses me off because these motherfuckers are why nobody believes people that are actually innocent when they say something. But let me stress again, let me stress again that Washington County Detention Center has its own pedo perv wing. So if you are charged with a sex offense or you're charged with a drug charge, but you have a prior sex offense, you will be staying in the Washington County Detention Center, but you will be staying in the sex offender wing with all people that are sex offenders. So though I do not believe her story is accurate considering he's in solitary fucking confinement, even if her story were to be accurate, he has other sex offenders telling him that they believe that he's innocent. If the story happened, I can smell the sarcasm from a million miles away. Again, I doubt that the story happened, but even if it did, I just want to stress the fact again that it would be other sex offenders that would have been the ones to have allegedly made this comment about knowing he's innocent because they can tell he's innocent. Stupid fuck. I am literally 0% surprised here because I already knew, I called from the very beginning that this would be the bullshit narrative that they gaslit people with. That yes, he's in Washington County Detention Center, yes, he's going to the federal pen, but he's doing ministry and doing the Lord's work within the system and he is helping all these, I mean I fucking knew this was going to be the narrative that they spun, but this is some next level delusion in every single one of these letters. I mean, this is just a flat out fucking lie is what they like. This is a complete flat out fucking lie in this letter. And you know what just, what blows my mind is that they wrote this letter, which is a complete fucking lie to people who have access to check all of this. They are sending this to the judge who has access to call up Washington County Detention Center and verify or disprove all of this. How fucking stupid is that? To send this letter with this fuckery in it to somebody who can verify that it's fuckery. You know, the, this, this letter is just so fucking stupid and ignorant that I don't even care to debunk the rest of it. I debunked the important parts and I, I'm done. I'm done with this fuckery today.